In this demonstration, we're going to create distribution groups. Distribution groups are not security groups. You could not use them to determine who has what access to files, to folders, to SharePoint sites. So it has nothing to do with security. It has everything to do with email. So we're going to go ahead. We're here in the admin center. And we're going to manage just the admin component of Exchange. This is going to bring us to what has been known for years as ECP, which is basically your Exchange Admin Center or console, or the EAP. So when I go to the Exchange Admin Center, notice I've got mailboxes, and I also have groups. Here, we have different group types and the email address associated with the group. So when you have a distribution groups, an example, we have all employees. The email address to all employees is all at, and then the name of our domain, which for demo purposes is 75COM844200 dot on Microsoft.com. So the distribution group means if I email that particular person, every single person in that group will get a copy of the email. It is not a shared mailbox. It's essentially like handing out a memo in everyone's mailbox. You put a copy in each one and best effort to see whether or not they've read it. So that's a standard distribution group. Down here we have a dynamic distribution group. So in a dynamic distribution group, I just want to show you some of the parameters. We have a display and an alias. Alias is what's going to preempt the at symbol for the name. We can see who owns it. We can see who's in it. But who's in it is dynamic, thus the dynamic distribution groups. What type of recipients can be in here? All recipient types. And there are more than one which are outside of the scope of this class. But in order to be a member, membership in this group will be determined by the rule you set up. The rule that was set up is that the department has to equal corporate affairs. So when you look at a user's properties of the user account themselves, they have to be in that exact department. You can add a rule to that, and I just want to point here. Let's say we wanted to create a dynamic distribution group that said if you happen to be out of Maine, you could say if state or province was equal to Maine. But of course, you have to make sure you're updating your user properties. You can write all the rules in the world, but if you haven't gone to the user properties and filled out all of the different places, these aren't going to work for you whatsoever. So I'm going to cancel out of this because I really don't want to edit corporate affairs. We're going to actually make a couple of our own. So I'm first going to hit the plus. Notice I can do distribution. This is email only. Everyone gets a copy of the email. Security group only used to control who can do what. And then we have our dynamic distribution groups that I just showed you. We're going to do a simple distribution group. Let's call it training. We'll give it an alias of training. So notice that filters down to the email address. The owner really is who can come in and, and own the process, add, remove members. Um, we can add group owners as members. And then here, I'm just going to pick some users, like Krista and Dan and Ann. Notice double clicking has added them, and I'm going to click on OK. Choose whether the owner approval is required to join the group. So let's say someone knows that I have this distribution group, and they would like to join it, then does this have to be done by the owner, or can they just automatically ask to join and be put in? I'm going to hit Save. Now, what I do want you to notice is that's the end of these screens. And I will hit Save. But I'm going to go back in here because there's one little caveat that no one ever sees. And I do think that it probably should be in that first screen. So I'm going to take Training and edit it. And notice there's a lot more places to go. We've already seen Ownership. We've already seen Membership and Membership Approval. That was in the wizard. But delivery management is a very, very important one. The default when you create a distribution group 
is that it can receive mail only from senders in your organization. So here's an example. Let's say you wanted to create a distribution group called Info. And if someone emailed info from your website and it was to go to Sandra and Bart and Eddie, then you could create the group. But unless you came in here, no one will be able to email you from your website because it's only senders inside the organization. It's not someone outside of your Office 365 groups. So you would have to change it to senders inside and outside of my organization. That's the one that everyone overlooks. I still do it on a regular basis, and for the record, it's been this way for a number of years. I just think that it's hidden one in where you create it, you make your choices, and then you have to go back in and edit that distribution list to make it public from the outside of your company. Message approval, if this happens to be something that's coming in, maybe it's going to upper level management, um, you might want some level of message approval before it goes through. Maybe it's a public distribution list, but it's going to the executives. You're going to want a moderator in between who says this content can go through, it can't go through. We have our email options. This is going to be a default reply address. So if someone gets emailed training at this address and then someone receives it and they want to reply, you want it to come from a certain address. And notice here the reply by default is training, but you can put a different reply address in there. We have a mail tip. So when someone emails this group, the mail tip will give them a little message. So it could be if it's internal, the proper protocol and what to do, or it could be something that says you can expect a message within 28 to 40, 24 to 48 hours. Um, that would be an example of a mail tip. If let's say this was marketing and you knew the marketing team was out in Utah at a trade show, you might want to have a mail tip for the week that says, this group is out at a trade show for the week. Please expect delayed responses. Whatever it is, that's what this is all about. And group delegation, really, um, if someone wants to send and receive as training, as opposed to their own account, you have to give them the ability to do a send as or send on behalf of. If I was to do a send on behalf of for a user, the example is, Maybe my assistant, Doreen, would be sending an email out on behalf of me because I'm out of the office or I'm dictating it. Um, the message would come through to say, Doreen, on behalf of Sandra. As opposed to send as, it would just say it came from me and it wouldn't name that person in the middle. So when you create a distribution group, give it a main name, make a couple parameters. That part's easy. The difficult part is the delivery management part because you have to give it permission for outside use if that's what you want to do. Otherwise, spend some time in these options and make sure it works for you. Now let's go ahead and do a dynamic distribution group. So I'm going here into dynamic distribution groups. I'm going to give it a display name. So this is going to be our Mayfield branch office users. We have the owner, which you can name. The types of recipients that will be members of this group, all recipient types. Um, I'm going to say it's only ones with exchange mailboxes because it is possible with mail users with external addresses or resource mailbox. I'm going to add a rule. So for the department, I'm just going to specify a word or a phrase and click on OK. And before you hit OK, as you can see, you have to hit plus to add it to the list, and then you hit OK. So as long as in Mayfield branch office users, their department has something about Mayfield in it, 
then they're going to land automatically in this particular distribution group. When I look at the user mailboxes outside, I just want to show you that we do have Office 365 permissions. We also have Exchange permissions. So as you go through here, you will see General, and it is still the user's information, their mailbox usage, their contact information, our organization. Notice we're in corporate marketing, and I'm going to say corporate marketing Mayfield. Just putting that word in there is going to be enough to throw this person right into that dynamic distribution group.